All right, now is the time to place my focal point in the middle ground, which is my tree. And the focal point in the middle ground is a hallmark of three layers of depth, where it feels like you're looking past a foreground, focusing on a middle ground, and then behind the middle ground is a soft background. And a way you can get an essence of this in terms of storytelling is so you hold up two hands in front of your face. And so you guys can do this. It's a nice exercise. And you put those hands, the first hand about 10 inches from your face and the next hand about 10 inches behind that, right? So if you want a foreground composition, foreground focus, you look at the hand that's closest to your face and you'll notice as you're focusing on that hand, if you open your fingers, everything in between those fingers and behind that hand is blurry, right? So that's two layers of depth. But if you focus on the hand that's further away through your fingers, that becomes sharp and in focus. And you'll see you have a blurry hand in front, a sharp focus hand in the middle ground, and then the blurry focus behind it. That is three layers of depth. And so that is the ideal to set up for a setting because it gives you the most narrative potential. And we're going to do creature design next. That gives us the most areas to showcase any size creature from kaiju to lizard, right? And now that you know about three layers of depth, you can start looking for that in your favorite media. You'll see it in kind of movie scenes and in, definitely in comic books. It can be quite effective. So I have to figure out a good placement of my middle ground tree. And I'm using shift here just to sh narrow it a little bit. But I want to get the base in there. So that looks pretty good. Let me see how my sketch lines up to that. Yes, yeah, so I can move it a little bit this way. Okay, good. Think about there. And I'm going to go ahead and shift my edges so I can get as much of that tree as possible. Okay, now I'm going to do a rough cutout of the tree and its environment. Again, I can hold down spacebar. And because the tree is cropped off, I'm not going to be able to use all of these branches. Cut off the person in the background there. Something like that. Duplicate it, Command-J, turn off the smart layer behind, maybe get rid of a little bit more. Well, I can actually keep that if I want. Hmm. Okay, now... I'm going to try to do this fairly quickly, but use my soft edged eraser at 100% and get rid of all the hard edge seams, except for the ones on the top, because that's the very top of my composition. Without accidentally erasing from the trunk itself.
Thanks. So like a foreground element, I am going to take some time next class cleaning up the edges around this middle ground element. But for now, I can look at what I have, and I can decide if I need anything extra. And the only thing that bugs me about the composition, I really like the colors, but what really bugs me about it is just how flat this white looks. So it'd be nice to break that up with something. And that's where I might be able to use these branches, especially because they're such a nice layer to cut out. And it, can sh it will sh be a nice way for me to show you how to use magic wand to cut something out when the circumstances are right. So I'm gonna just do this right away. I'm gonna use magic wand. I'm gonna say contiguous unchecked I'm going to click on the white of this smart layer. And that's going to select the white pixels everywhere in this image. The problem is my tolerance was 88, which is a little bit too high. So let me do that again and turn the tolerance down to 32, which is the default. Okay, now with the tolerance of 32, I'm going to do select inverse, so it's selecting everything except those white pixels, and then I'm going to do command J and turn off the smart layer. And you can see on the middle gray how nicely that cuts it out. That's why often when you do your own photo reference for compositing, it is very, very helpful to shoot on a green or a blue screen or a white backdrop and this kind of lightning shaped tree, I think I can use in my composition. And I just have to decide, do I want it behind or in front of my existing one? And maybe it will be a little bit of both. But that helps to break up that white. Maybe I'll even set it back a little bit like this. Okay, so now I've accomplished everything I wanted to in day one. I've moved into a, a rough composite. It might be nice to have like more of a focal point here, like maybe some sort of planet or some red sun or something. And because I've cleared all of my open space, I can now use my crop tool and crop it in a little bit more before I save it and then I'm done for the day. And this will just save some memory and some pixel space. I'm not going to crop it all the way, but an hour and a half in, lots of good practice compositing, making a, a fantasy landscape. I'll go ahead and, and save this as a JPEG and post my progress. That's where ideally we would be by the beginning of, of Monday's class so that then we can play with color and lighting adjustments and then cleaning it all up. So save it as a Photoshop file, then save as a copy, as a JPEG, if you want to post your progress. And you don't need to post your progress, but I will. The things that are required for this assignment is to be due next class, like towards the end of next class. It is your sketch and your finished composite. So just those two things. And PhotoP can be used to continue this and to work on it. Just make sure you're saving it as a PSD file. In fact, just to save time, I won't even save it as a JPEG. I'm just going to do a quick screen grab of it. Really, this two hour, um, 
Yeah, so you can attach any file to your email. So you can save it as a PSD and then attach the PSD to your email. And then when you download it at home, if you don't have Photoshop, it will download the PSD, but it won't be able to open with Photoshop. So instead, you have to go into PhotoP and then open it from PhotoP, and it will be able to read it. That's the great advantage of PhotoP. Uh, <laughs> yeah, technology has a lot of advantages. You'll write about it in question of the day number one, but it has a lot of right. headaches too, for sure. All right, thank you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and post that to Canvas. Just so you can see how inspiration relates to sketch and how sketch relates to the rough collage we've done so far. And that's it. I'll see you guys on Monday. I do have lab hours uh, until 2 o'clock for anyone that wants to use them. Take care.